She's on to. What? Yes. No, just tap on the window. Look in the window. I gotta go. I'm. A... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, what's up, guys? How are you doing? This is the Hoof Live podcast or the Hoof Live show, however you want to do it. Uh, I am your host, Sterling. We got uh, Anthony and Eric is back with us. But before you guys what even up? say a word tonight, <laughs> let me introduce you, okay, to the man, the myth, the legend, Bill's left tackle for nine seasons, okay, Mr. John Fina. Let me tell you this as well. The man only had six holding penalties in his entire career. Only six. Wow. Is that only right? Six. Because I, I tell people that all the time. I say, how many, how many penalties do you think I had holding? And uh, they're like 10, 20, 30. And I'm like, it's it's below 10. But I never counted them. So thanks wow. for doing that. Well, you know, that's what I'm here to do. Okay. And you only had 16 false starts. Okay. So I don't know if we have a, a listening problem, John, in the huddle or whatever. But <laughs> That's pretty good. That's less than two that's, a year. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Damn. We, we, if you told us some of our alignment did that these days, yeah. we'd sign up for it. <laughs> Man, that's pretty good. You know, that's it's pretty funny good. because, you know, people have asked me like, well, what, what made you play so long? You know, I wasn't the biggest guy. I wasn't the strongest guy, but I was really good on my assignments. So I didn't make too many mental errors. I stayed off the ground, but mm -hmm. it didn't hurt us either. You know, so and that, I mean, by penalties. So, I mean, literally, that's what, 10 yards, 60. You know, I'm under 300 yards in penalties. That's insane. Yeah, that's, yeah, some guys have that in a year easily. <laughs> my buddy Reuben Brown, my buddy Reuben Brown, who was you know my closest friend from the old days, man. It was like his his first couple of years. I was like, dude, can you just keep him in here? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and if he were on this, I'd you know you guys got to follow. He's got a pod now too. I think I'm the first uh, first person nice. on his pod, but yeah. We got it. We should get, we should ask Ruben if he wants to join us for yeah, sure. That'd be cool. Check it out. That'd be cool. John, what are you drinking down there? Is that, is that not is that apple juice? <laughs> it is. I don't know how old is your viewership. <laughs> it's an IPA. Yes, nice. it's old enough. Old enough. old enough. Old enough. Okay. For you not to ask. Okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. I digress. Fair, I won't fair. say another word about it. I am, however, drinking a little bit of wine myself, even though the bill's <laughs> lost. We just needed to cope sometime. But yeah. anyway, welcome to the Hoof, sir. Welcome to the Hoof family. We are glad to have you along with us. Um, before we get started, you know, we always say uh, a little shout outs to the guys in, in here always watching our show. Uh, Azor, he, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. And Jason says, what's up to you, John? John is the man here today. Uh, you know, what up, Hoof? Michael Lucas, what's up, man? Thank you for watching the show. Good. You know, there's there's more there's more coming. Uh, but anyway, but for those of you who are just watching us for the very first time, we ask that you like, subscribe, and share this episode of the Hoof Podcast. We really do appreciate it. And we always strive to give you the best content available that we can possibly give you here at Cover One. Uh, you know, we have shows lined up all week, kind of ranging from different things and, and so forth. So our content creators are dope. We are finishing season one. This is the last show of the season. And then we next week we will start uh, our draft prep and, and all that good stuff heading into free agency and so forth. So welcome, guys. How are you doing? Oh, you Living know, dream. hey, making it, making it. It wasn't it wasn't how we wanted it to end. That's for sure. But you know what? It's it's the least heartbreak I think I've ever felt in a bill season in a long time. We're used to a lot of heartbreak <laughs> and, you know, it's not the way we wanted it to end, but it's certainly not the worst ending. <laughs> Yes, there's shoulders to cry on, but I didn't shed a tear this weekend, guys. I did not shed a tear. It's oh, okay. Wow. It's okay. <laughs> All right. You know, I said on the show, I, I kind of prepared us for for uh, what uh, what could have happened. Right. So I'm not going to be mad if the Bills lose. Right. I'm just happy that you know they took another step in the right direction. It's hard for a young quarterback to go into his first AFC Championship game and win one. And I got questions for you, John, about that here, and, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. But um, so this show is a little bit different. We uh, we kind of have segments on this show. 
uh, we start off kind of talking about what's going on around the league, and that is called What's Poppin'. Uh, what's popping around the league, the latest and the greatest. We're going to keep this one a little brief tonight just because uh, the sample size is so limited. Um, and we have topics that, you know, our guys do not see beforehand. So are you guys ready for this? Let's go. What All right. Got? So we're going to start <laughs> Aaron Rodgers' future in doom. Aaron Rodgers. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the soon to be announced MVP of the NFL. All right. Now there is a there's there's this dilemma. Uh, does he want another contract or does he want out of Green Bay? You know, we know that they drafted Justin Love or Jordan Love uh, in the draft last year in the first round. We were all kind of taken by surprise. What is the motive behind that move, and what do you think Aaron Rodgers, uh, if if it's even true that he wants out or he wants another contract extension? So we're gonna start with you, Mr. Fina, and then we'll go to you, Eric, and we'll end with you, Anthony. Uh, are you sure that wasn't Buddy Love? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want it to be. Little little uh, Eddie Murphy movie. There you go. That was pretty that. good. That was pretty good. <laughs> All right. Come on, guys. I mean, if, if anybody's feelings are hurt because somebody got drafted to your position when you've been in the league for like 30 years, you're just going to have to get over yourself. People say, oh, well, maybe it motivated him to play better. I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> the guy's a pro. But – Think of it from the Green Bay perspective. Why not? If you got somebody great, you know, whether he tutors, tutors him actively or not, so what? I mean, the guy's going to learn in a great system with a great QB ahead of him. I mean, if Aaron Rodgers thinks he's going to play till he's 60, I mean, forget it. So where is he going to end up? Who cares? Is he... <laughs> Is he is he going to get a contract extension? I don't know. I mean, there are there are, there are a dozen teams out there who look at Aaron Rodgers the same way Tampa Bay looked at Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers is going to be okay. Um, I think it, it's uh, it's Buddy Love's time, and I look forward to a guy coming from a tiny little school oh. in an unknown state from a program you know that had a couple of flares of excitement to do really well in this league and. You know what? Passing the torch is what it's all about. So I don't know if what I said makes any sense. And frankly, I don't <laughs> care. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Right? So basically, John is saying, ain't nobody getting a trophy. Okay. No. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. And then the, the age of entitlement, you're done. Get the hell out of here. So John bringing in the old school approach, and I appreciate nice, that. Nice. Eric, take, take it away, baby. Uh, I think – Aaron Rodgers has another year in him. They've won 13 games the last two seasons. I think they keep him at least one more year. But he is on the clock, right? Jordan Love will play soon. But I think this year Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay. From there, who knows? I, I did read today he's looking for, what, $40 million a year, little raise. You know, why not? You know? Yeah. I mean, this, this is a funny story. I mean, the first when I heard his comments and everything, I just laughed. I'm like, okay, he's trolling everybody. I mean, it, nobody – like John Fina said just now, it's nobody cares. It's like you're Aaron Rodgers. We know you're going to get whatever you want. We know you're going to do whatever you want. The Packers, if they if he if he says Green Bay, you want me to stay? You're going to give me fifty million? They'll they'll do it. Whatever, great. Give him what he, what he deserves. Give him what he wants. He's he's going to win the MVP this year, and and he's going to capitalize on it. And he, I think he's just trolling Green Bay a little bit you know, for drafting the quarterback or, you know, and him saying, look at me, I'm still good, tooting his own horn a little bit, even though he ultimately, you know, fell short, just like our Bills did. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's Aaron Rodgers just playing mind games and, and getting what he deserves and, and great. Take your money and run. I don't care if you play in Indy next year and Green Bay next year, whatever. He's still Aaron Rodgers. He's still going to get his. He's still going to be in the MVP conversation. Uh, but we'll see. Who who knows? Maybe Green Bay moves on and goes with Love. I don't see that happening. I'm sure he just stays there, and maybe they front him some more of his money that in his guaranteed contract. I don't know, but but I doubt he goes anywhere. Yeah. So the the GM came out and basically said we'd be stupid if we got rid of uh, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I agree. I mean, I think he let him play out his contract and uh, ride it out. I mean, he's a he's a Green Bay legend. He won you a Super Bowl, uh, appeared in two Super Bowls. So yeah, you might as well just keep him. And let him let him learn under the uh, let the young guy learn under the vet here. Um, but yeah, John, you're right. I mean, you know, the the age of entitlement. It, it's our generation, man. It's uh, everybody's entitled 
to uh, what they think they own and what they think they need to have and so forth. So we're seeing that in the NFL, not necessarily with Aaron Rodgers, but there's a lot of other cases with uh, guys, you know, younger guys thinking that, you know, they're entitled and it's my position and you can't bring nobody else in and all this kind of stuff. So it's something to be seen. This is the NFL, as you know, as you guys know, things change in a matter of 24 hours, right? Mm-hmm. Things could change. So it's something that we will monitor moving forward. But I think it's pretty interesting. Aaron Rodgers will be prob- – he will be the MVP. Let's let's be real here. Um, he's going to win that thing, and it's going to be a landslide probably. So uh, now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> now here we go. Thoughts on the Super Bowl matchup. Now we saw our Bills. They got slaughtered. Okay, let's call it what it is. Okay, there is no uh, making this sound better than it is. We got destroyed in that game. <laughs> Uh, look, we got out coached and so forth, but we're going to save that for a little bit later in the show. Let's talk about this Super Bowl matchup. Let's get it out the way. Okay. We got to at least pay its respect to get it out of the way. We got Tom Brady, 40, what, two, 43 year old quarterback facing, uh, the Patrick Mahomes, who's supposed to be the next great, uh, NFL quarterback, John, starting with you, Anthony, we'll go with you next. Eric will finish with you here. What are your thoughts on this, uh, Super Bowl matchup? Who, who do you think is going to win? I think it really ma- matters uh, about the Kansas City offensive line. You know, they're banged up, oh, and that's yeah. going to matter. You know, you've got some pretty interesting guys that play defense on the defensive front for um, Tampa Bay, you know, not not the least of which is Jason Pierre-Paul. Um, so I think that really is truly the, the, the deal. If they're not healthy up front, in Kansas City, offensively, I think Tampa Bay wins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that losing a Pro Bowl tackle is is a pretty rough start when you're you're heading into the last game of the season, the championship game. The, I mean, that's it, it's a tough loss for Kansas City, but uh, for me personally, there's just no way in hell I'm rooting for Tom Brady. Uh, I I just hope Kansas City beats the crap out of him. You didn't ask me who I was rooting for. Yeah, that's true. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's true. (laughs) But but uh, I I mean that's that's I I still think Kansas City's offense can get it done versus Tampa Bay's defense. I mean we saw firsthand what those weapons can do. Kelsey and and Hill alone can tear you apart. Uh, But so can Tom Brady if he's on. He certainly wasn't on in the last game, but we know that he can turn it on when when the lights are up. So. Uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, I know that I I wouldn't mind if Kansas City, you know, threw some punches at uh, Tom Brady like they did our Buffalo Bills. So let's hope they put a beat down on him. But it, it's going to be I, I don't even know if I'm going to be excited watching this game, you know, because I'm disappointed the Bills aren't there. But also just I, I don't want to root for either one of these teams. <laughs> Eric, what do you got? I think you can be excited that the Patriots aren't in the Super Bowl. Mm hmm. Right, and Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes is fun to watch. You can't, you cannot disagree yeah. there. But you know, my initial thoughts on this is Tom Brady's had three interceptions in every single playoff game. Yeah, and you just can't afford to do that against Kansas City. You know, if the the tackles are a go, there's I don't see a, a favorable matchup for Tampa. I I really think nobody can stop this Kansas City Chiefs offense when they're hot, and that's been proven. They lost one game this year, right? Did they lose one? It was just one, right? Well, and that was starters, yeah. And that was a fluke interception against the Raiders. I mean, they were that close to being an undefeated team this year. You know, I mean, they're the hot right now, and they turned it all on last week. We saw it, and I think that carries over. And with Tom Brady, he looked – he did not want to take a hit. I think that was obvious. Every single time they got a free rusher, <laughs> especially a 43, right? Yeah, I mean, who, who wants to get hit? Like, right. <laughs> But I mean, those picks were bad picks. Yeah, Can we all agree on that. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, so who's gonna Who's gonna remember the picks when they got the W? Like hey, really? Exactly. Who, yeah. Nobody's who's talking about care? it. Who's gonna care? I it's probably Tom Brady's win. worst postseason ever, and he's in the Super Bowl, right? Like yeah. it, it's, will, it's crazy. I will tell you this. Experience though. I will tell you this. I know one thing that the Chiefs aren't gonna play as much man coverage as it is against the Bills. They're not gonna do that because. 
Tampa mm-hmm. has receivers that can that mm-hmm. that can thrive in one on one situations. Okay, like you're not just gonna sit there and, and just think you're gonna just gonna you know sit there and double or or, or, or sit there and you know just kind of you know man up and, and, and bump and run coverage all day. I mean, you will get eaten alive, right? You're gonna get eaten alive. Mike Evans and, and Chris Godwin, these are bigger wide receivers, and, and not to mention Cameron Brake, Br- Bronkowski. I mean, it's gonna present a matchup problem mm-hmm. on both sides of the ball. It's gonna be a good matchup. Is Antonio Brown going to be back, or is he out? Uh, they well, said it depends on play. how he's feeling. It depends on how he's feeling during the day, right? <laughs> he might go crazy. Uh, exactly. I mean, we it don't know. Up, right? There was an article. Play. Yeah, there was an article today that said uh, Brown and um, Le'Veon Bell will both be able to play in this game, which is interesting because you know they were on the Steelers team together. Now they're facing each other as kind of secondary scrubs, if you will, on the teams that made the Super Bowl. You know, they were both signed. One of them midseason after being cut. One of them off the street after all the issues he's had. Certainly not where people thought these two would be maybe three years ago, right? So interesting matchups there for sure. John, do you have a, a TikTok account? Just... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a TikTok, right? He doesn't have a TikTok, folks. John, you know, the Bill Pleasure does not have a TikTok. <laughs> Okay, and the reason why I asked you that question, sir, is because uh, Brittany Mahomes, I don't know if you guys know who she is, she is uh, carrying, she's with child with Patrick's baby, and she has some things to say on TikTok about how, you know, y'all going to stop comparing uh, comparing people. I guess she was talking about, you know, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. I just want to know if, if you've seen that, okay? If, obviously, you did it, and that's okay because you don't have TikTok. <laughs> But you guys, don't TikTok. <laughs> you don't have a TikTok. Eric, I don't, you know, have, a TikTok. You don't have a TikTok. Yeah, I don't have a TikTok. <laughs> I, guess it's just, I guess it's just me and the viewers here that probably see <laughs> Brittany Mahomes post about comparing Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Now I want to get this. Now I want to get this. This is this is kind of off the cuff. I want to get this from uh, the NFL veteran here. Okay, but, and a can of air comes out. That's exactly what someone yeah. that doesn't have TikTok would do. Blow the air. Just blow it out. <laughs> blow it out, baby. Um, we saw you know these two quarterbacks match up, and there's there's two schools of thoughts. You know, there's one where you say Patrick Mahomes is in another level by itself, right? And then you look at you have to look at the context of what Josh Allen's dealing with and what he's working with. John, the prospects of Josh Allen even being in the same stratosphere as uh Patrick Mahomes in the future. What do you think about that? What is, what is your perception of where Josh Allen could be versus where the media thinks he is right now? Well, your TikTok connection cut out for a second there. But I, <laughs> I think what you asked me is, is can Josh Allen get better? And is, is that the question? Does he have Pretty room much. to grow? I mean, yeah. Can you, can, do you think there'll be a time where we can put those two in the same sentence as far as ability and, and, and what they're able to do? And you can be honest. You don't have, you know, you don't, yeah, don't I mean, feel afraid to hurt feelings if yeah, you have to. I don't really, I don't think they're that far apart right now. No. Um, you know, look, if you want to talk about this last game a little bit, I mean, they 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 went man to man on us, and whether we expected it or not, we required that our wide receivers beat the coverages, and you know. Of course, I didn't watch the film and watch all three or four guys out in routes at all times. But, you know, I'm not that person that says that guy over there, way over there was open. But really, the (laughs) primary, you know, Uh primary reads are on this side. So whether whether that guy's open or not doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think I think the wide receivers needed to win more against Mm -hmm. Kansas City. But I don't think that's a reflection on Josh Allen. Um I, I certainly don't hold anybody in contempt for it. They played better than we did. They, we didn't adjust well enough, and we didn't win enough individual battles. But I think that Josh Allen, as a talent, um, yeah, I think he's there. I mean, you know, we we'll put a couple more pieces in place for him, and you know, you we play a little bit better defense. We have a couple of key defensive players get a couple of different stops, and the the composition of the game changes. But these are all theoreticals, right? Right, um, right, right. He's already shown an ability to grow from season to season. Exactly. That is very impressive. So, uh, with the right uh, changes or the right, you know, wrinkles to the offense, yes, the answer is yes. Okay. 
Anthony, go for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with everything Fina just said. I mean, it's it's tough to say that how what if we could put Josh Allen on the Chiefs with with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, then we'd be having the same conversation. It's Mahomes with the Bills receiver equal to Allen with the guys that he had. They were the difference makers on the field. Don't get me wrong, Mahomes outplayed Allen too in this game, but. Uh, the difference was what we saw on the field. And and this isn't the last time these guys are going to meet. This These teams are going to meet, right? We're going to have to find a way to beat the Chiefs to get further. If we ever want to see the Super Bowl, you have to beat the Chiefs no matter what, I mean, let's even just next beat, season. Let, let's just beat the team that's on the schedule next. First. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's what we did. I mean, we, look at the teams that were in front we of us this year. <laughs> well, no, we we played the Chiefs. We play the Chiefs in the regular season next year, so we will Maybe see this matchup again. Under a rock. Maybe I should crawl back under my rock. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true NFL vet, one game at a time. Yeah. Right, we, we look at it from a, a fan's perspective, as you know, and, and you know we don't care about week to week because we ain't got to be in the meeting rooms. Well, I think you I do, think <laughs> Coach McDermott. <laughs> Coach McDermott's press conference today was amazing. If you didn't get a chance to see his end-of-year press conference, I highly recommend you go back and watch the whole thing. And one of the snips that he said, you know, somebody asked him a question about uh, adding speed to the roster or something like that, and his response was just absolute gold. And it was true to every word of it. I mean, you could tell he was just speaking truth. It was, you know, you can't – if you think that – this roster is that close to a Super Bowl, and that's all you need to do to get to a Super Bowl. You're dead wrong. You need to start from scratch. You're building a whole new team. You're building everything together. It's a whole new start next year. Like you can't just say, "Oh, we're going to be here next year, and that's it." And I totally understand that mentality. There's a lot we have to change, but certainly their mindset now is has to be how how do we end up taking the next step next year? If we're in the same situation next year, how do we get past the Chiefs? Because they they've proven they're going to be there time and time again, Eric. Yeah, and, and John, I think you can speak on this. Like, how much like there's a lot of film out there of what you know schemes the Bills defense has been doing and, and the offense. So you have to like change that every single year. You have to try something new every single year, right? Do, do you agree with that, John? To a point. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you add different players in different situation it gives you the ability to change coverages to put more pressure on the quarterback so it does give you a little bit more breadth than what you can do i right you know look i i am not a guy who's going to sit here and tell you you know who's good and who's bad in the front seven it's not my job i like them all i mm-hmm. want them all to win they right. seem like great guys same um but personnel changes happen and you know, Dable, or sorry, um, Bean and McDermott have shown that they make good key decisions. I mean, they did from last year to this year. And yeah. and guess what, guys? I mean, we swept the AFC East. We, we made it to the championship yeah. game. Yeah. Hell of a you, know many, you know how many regrets I have? Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm just, I'm happy to be here. That's what I've been saying all week with the championship yeah. game. Got to experience two, you know, playoff wins and a 13 win season. That's yeah. so huge for for me being a young <laughs> younger Bills fan. You know, look, Sterling, I think you'd agree with me on this point. I don't know about those two jabronis. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. We, we can sit here and theorize on the free agent market and the draft all we want. Right now, we could build a team with our magic eight mm-hmm. ball and win the whole damn thing next year. But again. We don't get to make those decisions, but every Bills fan and every member of the Bills Mafia gets to rest assured that we at least for for the first time have consistency in control that we can trust. Yeah, that, that are going to yeah. make good decisions. Yes, right? yeah. they get yeah, a chance it. to win and compete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it. I, I know, and, and I love I love that approach, and mm-hmm. uh, I think it's important for all of us to kind of look. It's it's okay to, to 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 relish the moment, right? We didn't get it done, and that's okay. But again, think about where you've been and yes. where you've be, where you're going and where you are at right now. And as a Bills fan, you have to be excited. <laughs> like there is nothing, there is nothing cooler than to be able to say, you know, 
like from a team that hasn't been there in 25 years, 25, 27 years since you've been around. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's not to say you're old. I'm just saying, yeah. man. You, 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 were there. you were there. You were there. You were there. And you look good, by the way. You were there. Yeah. Thinning a little bit. But. Look good, man. You are, I'm telling you, Fina came to watch a game with us. The, it was a Cardinals game. He was here in Denver watching it with us uh, at, while we were still able to gather at the Packers bar, although in limited capacity. And, you know, you think offensive linemen who played that long ago, man, you are the picturesque of health. I don't know what it is you do if you're like on some crazy diet or whatever, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's part of it right there. I'm telling you, but wow. Yeah. To have the health you do after playing as long as you did in the NFL, man, more oh, power to oh. you. <laughs> All of my secrets are revealed on my TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, we won't display your username on TikTok. We're going to keep that on the low low. Okay. We're going to keep it real hot. Yes. All right. But John Fina is a force on TikTok. Yeah, I'm telling Just you, put man. That out there. Put that exclusive out there. group. Yes. It's an exclusive, exclusive group. Yeah. Invite only. You know, you, you probably don't want anybody around when you're watching the TikTok, but whatever. Okay, but anyway, but no, but to you guys' point, you know, it yes, we need to look at where the bills are and where the bills are going, and that's really cool. What is it like? Um, and I know John, you have to go here in a few minutes because Joe Miller needs you or whatever, whatever, Joe. Uh <laughs> what is it like? Look, 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 look. <laughs> Joe, yeah, answer, ask your question, Sterling. Look, ask my question. What's it like suiting up for a, a, a AFC championship game? You've done that a couple times. What to, What's that like? Because we see it on TV and we're like, damn, like, how cool is that? Like, what, what goes through your mind? What's the mindset going into a game? Like, is it you treat it like any other game? Or, or do you understand as a player that the stakes are much higher? You know, the air, the room for error is much shorter. Well, I think in preparation, you treat it like it's, you know, I don't want to say any other game, but like you're preparing for a division rival. Um, and, and you it, look, everybody knows that the crescendo is a crescendo for a reason, mm -hmm. right? You don't start on Wednesday with the crescendo when the game isn't for another five mm -hmm. days. So you got to put in the work, you know, your intensity level, maybe you paying a little bit more attention in meetings. I don't know. I mean, I always paid the same amount of attention, but the difference is, you know, that six hours before the game, before kickoff, the adrenaline starts pumping and you have like an unlimited supply mm -hmm. and you can't help it because you're feeding off of everybody else's energy. And I don't think people are artificially creating it. It just sort of starts to yep. well up. And I, you know, look, I'm not, you know, rubbing crystals and, you know, <laughs> playing with the Ouija board or anything like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like everybody's got their own aura and it's just, it's effusive. It's everywhere. You know, and um, it just it amps up and you can feel it. And, you know, it's funny because my first year in, in Buffalo, I, you know, first of all, I was why I was like, are you kidding me? These guys are huge and they move fast. And this is crazy. <laughs> There's no week off. This is insane. <laughs> and they kept saying, just wait till we get to the playoffs. It gets faster. And I was like, how? <laughs> what are you talking about? And it really does. It steps wow. up. But. If you were, you know, having not been in a situation like that before, on the top of my mind was like, how, how can I bring it to another level? But it really just, it comes from within you and it just grows. And, uh, you, you know, you just, you're looser, you're, you're more amped up, you know, you're, you're, you're just ready. It's, it's pretty incredible feeling. I mean, I'm sure it does help to have the great Marv Levy give you guys like talks before the game. Original, yeah. I mean, that's, that's not like Jesus, but Bill's history. That's Jesus. Pretty close. Okay? I mean, that, whatever that man says is golden. I don't care if he said, Hey guys, I gotta take a shit, but let's go. Like, like hell yeah. Where's the toilet paper? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, so it's so exciting, man. And I, Hey, I'm thankful for you to be able to kind of share with us because as guys who, who just, you know, just cover the team from, yeah. from afar, we don't know what that's like. We don't know that like, it takes another level. We hear it, but we don't know it. You know what I'm saying? We, so we certainly feel it, right? right? As fans, guess, we guess, felt it. We felt that remember, energy. If you if you haven't been in a situation like that, um, but you've been in the room when your child was born, 
And, you know, that last five minutes or 10 minutes, depending what the delivery is like before the baby presents, that sort of exhilaration, the pride, the excitement, you know, and then all of a sudden, I mean, you're just awash with this feeling of how am I going to feed this kid? Like you could, you would touch yourself, but you wouldn't even feel it because everything is just, just blown up, just incredible joy and, and thrill. And it's, it's an, it's a, it's an amazing feeling. Well, that's cool. So hopefully, you know, hopefully we, uh, and I think Josh Allen's going to win the Super Bowl before it's all said and done. I think the Bills are on their way. Um, but uh, listen, no, it, it's I, exciting. It's exciting, right? I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that feeling in, it, that he just described, having a kid in a few days here, any day now. My kid could be arriving. My oh. first. So I'm looking forward to that feeling. I'll I'll join that club of knowing what that feels like. Then this is uh, Anthony's wife right here. Uh, yeah, me. see, she's saying right there. Yeah. <laughs> Because we will be experiencing that very soon and looking forward to it for sure. I told him he's got to hang on until the end of the show, at least. So oh, baby, too, right right John. But, right. John, I wanted to ask you, John, uh, the, the Bills free agency, you know, it's way too early to look ahead. Who are we going to sign? What are they going to do? But I did want to ask you about the idea of continuity on the line, right? Because we our offensive linemen, that's our biggest position of, of guys that are free agents right now. Our starting line, both our guards, you know, they have some consistency uh, at right tackle now, but or left tackle. So, is can you speak to us about what consistency means? Is it important? We've seen McBean be able to, uh, you know, pace together an offensive line. Look what they did with Daryl Williams. I mean, he's going to probably get big money, whether it's staying with the Bills or going elsewhere now. But they signed him for nothing. They could continue doing this, but you know, how long can they gel like that? It seems like something has to be made on that line to solidify it and get that consistency. But are we right in thinking that way? Well, it's clear to me when they finally settled into, you know, five starters, yeah. injuries aside, that um, they work better together. You know, Morse is a great communicator. He makes great calls. It's it's clear they, they, don't, have a, they don't have a lot of mental mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that starts in the middle with Morse. And you're right. I mean, Williams played great football. Yeah. Dawkins played really well. Um, um, it'd be nice, right, to keep everybody together. But, or and, you know, front offices make decisions based on who's available. Right. So if there's somebody else available and they think they're a better football player than Feliciano or Bodker or maybe the, what their idea is to, to find somebody who pushes them, and winters goes away or yeah but the the mm-hmm. short answer is yes continuity on the offensive line is great for the offensive line but it also helps the quarterback you know it help it, it's good to know that your same five guys are up there every game mm-hmm. okay yeah yeah i think i think it's important i i really do think it's important you need that i mean it's a boring answer Gosh, but Alex, it, everybody yeah will give it's you the a, same answer. Right. Yeah. And I don't care. I honestly, I don't care who gets paid. I mean, I want every football player to make sixty million dollars. Yeah. I mean, go for it. it. It's a market-driven economy, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I get in there. I get into these fascinating discussions with people all the time, and they say, "Well, football players make too much money," <laughs> and I say, "Really? Why?" And they can never tell me why. And Roger say, Goodell yeah. makes too much money. He doesn't have to do it on the field, right? <laughs> but I, I always say to them, I think I say, okay, how many, and I'll ask you guys, how many great quarterbacks are there in the NFL? Would you say yeah. six? Would you say Maybe. eight? Yeah. All right. Let's just yeah. say eight. Yeah. How many American men are walking around <laughs> between the age of 21 and 35? 10 million? Millions. 20 yeah. million? You're telling me out of 20 million people, we can only get eight guys to be great at this? Yeah. Give them all the money they can get. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, pay that man. Yeah. yeah. Pay that man. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't make any qualms about uh no, but how some much people do. players make. You know, that's not that's not my job. You know, no. I mean, it, like I said, it's an entertainment business, and people put we put money and making them rich. So you can't comp- yeah. if you watch it, you can't complain about <laughs> it. You know, you know what the nice you make thing what is the though? market's willing to pay, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. But the, you know what the nice thing is now for you guys and for me, right? When I played. You could only look at me and my teammates through the prism of a newspaper or 
a radio interview. Mm -hmm. And now you guys have access on social media to look beyond the surface into the minds and the hearts of these players. And guys are guys share more with their fans than we were ever even able to. And this connection, this give and take between specifically the Buffalo fan base and the Buffalo Bills is a really, it's a glorious relationship to have access to. And I would, I, th I would think that the fans of today are more satisfied with their players and whatever money they make because they have, they're real people now. They're right. real. And I love that about social media. The other 99.9999% and TikTok, <laughs> TikTok yeah. <laughs> hey, hold on, man. If it wasn't for TikTok, we wouldn't be a Corvette Corvette, okay? As you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so again, John, John's uh, you know, his uh his TikTok account, you know, it's out there, guys. It's yeah, just, you gotta you know, find it. I wouldn't even I mean I don't even know what to do. Like, do I have to get do I have to get permission from the Chinese Communist Party to have an account? Like, well, that's a good have, place to start. Yes, I don't know. Do I have to, <laughs> I do I have to pledge allegiance to Xi Jinping or something? Uh, I have no idea. You might. <laughs> hey, look, listen, I don't know. I mean, I might have a TikTok account that I don't use, I just watch from afar, but I don't know. But you do. I'm, I'm sure you <laughs> sign over. I'm sure you sign over more information than you think when you sign up for something hey, like that. You know, yeah. sign up for this. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. Now, you're on. No. You're on TikTok <laughs> right now. All right, what's the next <laughs> hard-hitting question? Yeah, what uh, do we got? Uh, don't you have to leave? Uh, no, hey, if he's staying here with us, don't hey, let him leave. We'll keep him all night. I don't want to throw all up in my DMs. We'll, we'll keep, keep him all night. Guy for the show, yeah, yeah, you know. So I'm just saying, I don't want you to get in trouble, man. I don't no, we're, we, we, we got, if we got him, we, we'll keep him here. Heck, put him I, to work. <laughs> hey, if you want another one, I got it for you. Here we go. Hook for buns. MVP, uh -oh. LVP, Okay. Hoof is your most valuable player of the game. It could be from either team. Uh, and then you could do a least valuable player of the game from either team. Okay. Eric, we're going to start with you. Mr. Fina, we're going to go with you next. And Anthony, we'll end with you. Ooh, tough to find some hoofs in this one. But yeah. I, I, you got to go Josh Allen. I'll take the easy shot. I mean, we saw some of the film, some of the all 22. Not a lot of receivers were open, right? Had to get creative. But Josh Allen – Still made plays for his team. Some of the plays he made were just unbelievable. Running backwards, you know, throwing the, the underneath route to Cole Beasley. I mean, I mean, there was some bad plays as well, but, I mean, figuring out how to run the football, keeping this team alive. I mean, they were getting beat down. The only thing I wish he would do is, is finish the drive and score touchdowns instead of settle for, for three. But, mm -hmm. I mean – when, when the team was overmatched and, and getting overplayed, Josh Allen still made plays for his team, and I think that deserves a hoof. Okay. Mr. Fina, most valuable. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll pick one from each team. I said, you know, to my key to the game was you have to stop Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Um, and we didn't. And I think, you you know, you can say Patrick Mahomes was the MVP, but that guy found space. He made catches. And I think he really was the one that opened it up for Tyree Kill. Mm -hmm. um, they both killed us. They can share it. But Kelsey would be the Chiefs MVP. Uh, for the Bills, man, I don't know. It's hard. Like, how do you choose an MVP in a loss? I mean, what a dubious honor. <laughs> but, Just go with you know, it. Just go with yes. it tonight. <laughs> I mean, here, Justin, Justin, really off the top of my, uh, off the top of my head, I mean, I, I always give it to a guy that plays hurt. I mean – Beasley, Beasley yeah. didn't have a great game, but I think he's the M, he's an MVP because he embodies the type of spirit and things and the things that we want from our Buffalo Bills. Um, so a weak answer at best, but I don't care what you guys think. So um, <laughs> it's good. Hey, I was going to say I don't do I don't do LVPs. Yeah, you know, I tough. just I'm not into it. Those guys feel bad enough. They don't need some broken down old football player pretending like he didn't have a shitty play or you know, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. That, that's, right. that's, for, that's for somebody else. Um, I love all my guys. You know, they, they, they kill themselves when they're out there and in 20 years, they're going to feel it. So yeah, yeah. Um, they're all MVPs. Sorry. Yeah. You know, I, 
Beasley was going to be one of the names I brought up, even though he didn't have the big game, just because he was playing with a broken leg. That's insane that he would step up and say, there's no way I'm missing this playoff season with you guys. I'm going to be right next to you and I'll do whatever it takes to do that. Uh, but I also could say the same thing about the team in general. My hoof goes to the fourth quarter team play for this offense because it really the whole team, because they didn't give up. They knew, they knew it was basically over and the game, you know, wasn't going their way. And, and, it was going to be difficult to turn around at that point, but they didn't stop. They did. The, they scored. They did the onside kick. They recovered the onside kick. They played hard all the way to the end, even with you know the the scrumming at the end and the craziness that happened. Uh, I was just proud watching the end of that game and saying, you know what, this team didn't give up. They didn't just say, oh well, we lost, so we'll just run the clock out and and punt and not care. They played hard all the way to the end because that's who they are, and we love them for that. Okay, so I'm going to surprise you a little bit. I'm going to go with Tyler Bass as the uh, MVP. I love it. Hey. Just because a rookie, uh, you know, 251-yard field goals, that's not oh. easy to do. Longest I mean, field goal in Arrowhead yeah. in the playoffs ever. I think yeah. that's pretty cool. And the onside kick, I mean, the guy, Tyler Bass is a weapon. I mean, that he one was a good, too. Weapon, yeah. Right? So – my kudos goes out to uh, Tyler Bass. I know Eric hates that because he doesn't, <laughs> one, he doesn't like rookies, and two, he doesn't like kickers. So you know, well, Eric, I, I, I have no problem like with Christmas Tyler Bass and puppies either. <laughs> 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 bah humbug. <laughs> but Tyler Bass is definitely unique. I think we could say yeah. that. And I just don't like rookie kickers because they, you know, he's in the biggest moment, right? Oh, and he, he came through, but like yeah. rookie kickers make me nervous in that aspect. So, well, I think we've we can at least say we know that he's the kicker going forward. We are not going to talk about kicker or punter this entire offseason yeah. now yeah. because they they both did an excellent job this entire year. And, and Bass really proved that he was worth the draft pick and more because now we don't have to worry about it. He's our guy, and that's okay. a good feeling to have. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, and it, we're, we're, we're breezing through it. Where do we go from here? The season summary. Um, so, and the reason why I asked that is because everybody, you know, like last year when the Bills lost to the Houston Texans, you know, we Brandon Bean comes oh. out and he talks about how, <laughs> hold on, before you make a comment there, Mr. Fina, he talked <laughs> about, you know, at the end of the season, you kind of see where your, where your flaws are, where you need to improve to get better. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, Look, I know he doesn't want to hear it, but that's okay because you have to. You're gonna to have to answer now. Where, and this is just speculatory, Mr. Fina. So just dream with us a little bit over here. Take yourself <laughs> out of a player point of view. Just get fan right now. Where do the Bills go from here? We'll start with you. Anthony will go with you next. Eric will end with you. Where do we go from here? Thoughts well, on this? The, the the reason I made that reaction about that Houston playoff game was I'm still angry about that BS oh, blockback call. Yes, you know? right? That, that that changed the game. And it was a terrible call by any any measure. I've looked at it 10 times. I've seen I've seen a hundred times worse in a hundred ball games since and before. And that call was beyond pathetic. Mm -hmm. I mean that referee should be fired. Twice. Mm -hmm. They should fire him and then bring him back in and say, oh, by the way, we forgot to tell you, you're fired again. <laughs> an official, not a referee. There's only one referee, I forgot. All right, so where do you go from here? Um, and I don't care wh whether it's free agent or draft, whatever you say. I mean, we need, we need to add somebody who can apply pressure to the opposing team quarterback. Yes. That's, that's my belief. Mm -hmm. I think also that... Um, you, you could add depth to the offensive line. Um, uh, you know, tight ends are very dynamic now. And either our guy gets more dynamicer or <laughs> they add somebody with more dynamicness, yeah. right? Defensively, like you know, I can go back to defense a little bit more. I, th I love the secondary. I think those guys are good. Um, you might want to find uh, another guy in the middle. I know Matt Milano is kind of in a contract situation, too. Okay. So, um, you know, they'll have to look at that position. But, I mean, I don't feel like there's a lot to do. Mm. I mean, even if yeah. they signed everybody back, people get better, people get healthy. Um, they're going to add four to five people in free agency somewhere. And I think I think those those people addressing those areas would be good. 
Okay, so we have a, a super chat super here. Chat. AK Cash, whoever that is, he's bringing the cash money to the show tonight. Mr. John Fina, he has a, a, a statement for you. I'll read it uh, just in case if you can't read. Uh, JF, about 25 years ago, I was about 10 years old, and you came and hung out after the game and tailgate with our family and friends in the RV lot. Great memory and always wanted to say thanks for that. How freaking cool is that, Mr. Fina? The floor is yours. Yeah, so there's a reason that I started hanging out with fans after the games in the lot. It's because the lines of traffic to get out of the stadium were horrible. <laughs> and, you know, you, you get in your – I can tell you this about playing football too is – uh, I finally figured out, like, I'd, I'd, I'd steal three or four bananas from the breakfast table, and then we started drinking Pedialyte, but invariably, my hand would lock up when I was driving. You're so dehydrated. Your calves yeah. would lock up, and you get in your car, and you just sit there, and, you know, by, by the time I was halfway home, I'd have to park the car and get out and walk around anyway. So rather than be stuck in traffic, I just started pulling over. And just visiting with fans, and they give me a beer That's and awesome. feed me. And then when the traffic died down, I'd take off. So for my last probably five seasons, you know, I was right there on One Bill's Drive, just hanging out with people and just chatting That's and awesome. talking. And there was a group of people you know, that I spent the most time with. They were awesome. I, I can I can speak to that fans' experience as well, John. When you came and visited us in Denver and and hung out with us Bills backers, even though it wasn't us at our strongest, well, like we would love it to be. So hopefully you can come back and experience that next season. But just just so down to earth, easy to talk to. We appreciated it. We love that you you came on this show for us. Uh, and, you know, it's just something speaking to being a human being, you know. We can disagree on football. We can disagree on politics. But at the end of the day, you're a good human being, and, you, you know, it shows, and, and we, the fans, appreciate that. That you could come and just hang out with us and be yeah. one of us, you sure. know that it was an hey, awesome, man. awesome experience. Well, you know, I, I feel like all of us retired guys got to figure out a way to be good ambassadors for the team. For you sure. Know, one thing that was brilliant, you know, I don't know if you guys know Jeremy Kelly in Buffalo, the director of alumni relations, and Marlon mm -hmm. Kerner. You know, these guys have done a brilliant job bringing the old Bills back and getting them connected yes. to the team. You know, when I left Buffalo, you know, you know, you I felt like I was being run out of town on a rail. Mm. I, I didn't feel like I ever wanted to go back there except for the, the wonderful friends I've made in the city that I fell in love with. Um, but you know, there was a really kind of bad taste in my mouth. And then I think Marlon Kerner calls up and says, Hey, we're doing alumni weekend. We, you know, we want you to come back. And I'm like, me, really? I mean, they're not going to be throwing eggs and rotten vegetables at me when I land. I'm like, dude, they love you. And I'm like, wow. Okay. So, you know, I, I just feel like they've extended such wonderful love and appreciation to me, Jeremy Kelly and Marlon Kerner in particular, that you know, I just feel compelled to, you know, kind of deliver the good news of what it's like to be in the Bills Mafia, the special fans that we have, yeah, the community sure. that's there. And that's you know, awesome. I mean, I lived I lived in the city of Buffalo. I didn't live out in the sticks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you were as apt to see me walking up and down Elmwood Avenue as you were on the 35 yard line going in for a score. I mean, and that was my place, downtown Buffalo. I loved it. So we have another one, another super chat from uh, Don, uh, John DeMarchi. Uh, thank you for watching the show and uh, contributing to uh, our, our yeah. habit here. But he says, Kelly, Young, Farr, Peyton Manning, McNabb, Big Ben, Mahomes, lost first conference championship games. Wow. Brady had lost three, Rogers four, Fina. Thank you for your service. Old man Bills fan behind enemy lines on Miami Beach. <laughs> nice. uh, that was for you as well, Mr. Fina. Uh, yeah. Knock yourself out and answer that one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that this guy, this Josh Allen character, he's fit and he fits the the profile of a, of a pocket passer, but then bewilders you with his legs and his ability to, to take advantage of open space, things sure. that, you know, some of these older quarterbacks can't do anymore. So, you know, fingers crossed, project him into a nice long career of 10 plus years. If he can make a home in Buffalo and stay there, I think odds are good that he gets back to that game and leads. Um, you know, I, I hate saying this, like it always falls to the quarterback. But one thing that keeps coming into the forefront of my brain is 
there is no shortage of leadership on this team. Oh, yeah. There is no shortage of positive voices from the secondary, from the offensive line, you know, from the receiver core yeah. that, you know, if you can keep keep that kind of culture and it's hard to create a good culture. If you can keep that culture and continue to add guys that fit into it, then yeah, odds are that with Josh Allen as quarterback, the Buffalo Bills do get there and win one. Yeah, that gets back to your point of, right. of McDermott and Bean doing things the right way and building, and you have trust in them, right? We don't know what they're going to do, but whatever it is, we know it's going to work out. We trust it's going to work out. And that reminded me of, of Deion Dawkins in his article when he said, I wanted to rip the C off my chest and give it to Stefan Diggs because of what he was doing on the field for the guys, you know, helping Gabriel Davis is what he talked about. But he said, he's just like, I wanted to rip the C off my chest and give it to him because, you know, there's, there's a lot of leadership on this team, a lot of good attitudes on this team, despite yeah. what we heard about Stefan Diggs. That's why I brought him up specifically because he was supposed to be the diva guy and everything coming in and could not have been further from the truth. Well, maybe uh, maybe McBean and McDermott and Mick so and so can look into a man's <laughs> chest and look into their heart. Yeah, um, I wasn't laughing at uh, Dion Dawkins. Um, I read his essay; it was very nice. It was. Uh, I was laughing at what I I read on the screen. And to Mister Spuds from Minnesota, I didn't lose my Minnesota accent. I never had it. I was born in Minnesota, oh. but my family moved to Arizona when I was about three four months old so <laughs> hey. no, i didn't lose the accent i never got yeah. it so, so john yeah. demarco says uh Another old time question. question he says john fina what was it like to block bruce smith in practice? That's, <laughs> that's why he was so was good practice. right that's why he was so <laughs> good <laughs> it was miserable i mean it was um and thank god you know we didn't go hard and practice during the season against you know 1v1 because I think I'd still be demoralized. Uh, but in training camp, it was um, it was a horrifying endeavor. <laughs> I, I was I was miserable, and uh, this was my second year, obviously, and I just felt like I, I can't do anything. I, one on one pass pro is the hardest drill for an offensive lineman, bar none. Mm -hmm. you, you're it's designed for you to lose. But I lost with an incredible amount of ridiculousness <laughs> and embarrassment to Bruce Smith daily. Um, and then I'll tell you, I beat him once. The first <laughs> time I beat him, I like I wanted to take a victory lap. I, <laughs> I was like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I was, a, I was a hero in my own mind, and I was like dreaming about it, replaying it in my mind, just like that Geico commercial with the guy singing on the motorcycle from Minnesota, you yeah. know, and then snaps back to reality. You're like, you got another one against him. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Did he ever talk awesome. crap to you though? During training camp, did he ever talk crap to you? No, he, he didn't really talk crap to me. But um, I do remember, you know, it's funny. Everybody has a moment in their life or many moments in their life where they remember. And Will Wol Will Wolford, it's hard to say fast, ended up going to Indianapolis. And so we go into training camp this year. And, uh, you know, Jim and Thurman and Bruce and Daryl, everybody's cutting it up, you know, in, in the stretch line. And, you know, Jim's teasing Bruce and and uh, about this and that. It's starting to get a little heated, a little extra funny. And then uh, Bruce just deadpans over to Jim and he's like, hey, man, your life is in my hands. Because if I can't teach that kid to play left tackle, you're dead. <laughs> and in, in my mind in my mind i was like i'm that bad and holy crap i have the franchise in my hands yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, wow um, yeah so you know i think um you know turnabout is fair play and and bruce didn't quite mentor me in in you know, technique and stuff like that. But he would, he'd make a comment here and there. And when I did well, he would compliment me, which, which made me feel good. And then I turned that around when Marcellus Wiley came to Buffalo and he struggled mm -hmm. a little bit. And, um, you know, I talked to him quite a bit and I said, look, here, here's what I hate, you know, figure out the guy that you're playing against what he hates and borrow something from somebody else. 
you know, everything's a copycat league. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the height of, um, what is it? The height of a compliment is mimicry, right? So the best compliment I can give you is me copying something you do. So I worked with Marcellus a lot and, you know, it's just kind of a way to pay it back. And um, I hold Marcellus in very high regard as I do Bruce and all those old guys. And, you know, it was really more of a team than most people can, uh, can imagine. That's hey. awesome. Wow. I have a question. So we saw Edwards Hilaire get laid out by Jordan Poyer. You know, what would you say your welcome to the NFL moment was? Oh man, I've, I've repeated this about a million times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're in training camp, uh, my rookie year, and uh, Mark Maddox. You know, oh. it was one of those one of those things where, you know, I think the tempo is seventy five percent or fifty. <laughs> so I come out, and Mark Maddox hit me so hard. I mean, I don't know how it happened, but. I sprained my toe. He hit me so hard up here and it translated all the way through my body that, that I had like a sprained toe. And I was like, Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, I just got laid out in a drill and I mean, coach rewound, rewound the film like six times. And I was like, <laughs> the guys are laughing. And I'm like, hell no. I am not going to willingly <laughs> go into this ever again. <laughs> I'm going to be ready, man. I'm <laughs> And uh, I told Mark about that the last time. Mark Maddox hosts a, a, a group out in Phoenix, does great things for charity. Right. You should look him up. Super great guy. And I, I said to him, man, I, I just thought you hated me. And, um, you know, I, I, and he's like, dude, I was hurt the year before. I, I was fighting for my life to get a job. It had nothing to do with you. And it dawned on me. I was like, wow. You had to play 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, here I was placing my anxieties and my issues on him but really what he was doing was he's fighting for a paycheck man wow yeah. that's crazy but he he, he lit me up and then <laughs> the venerable awesome one of the coolest guys sam gash i'm covering punts as a rookie uh because i was pretty fast for a big guy and sam gash was on the return team for the patriots and he came and got up under my chin and I literally, I almost fell over. And I'll remember Sam Gash. I mean, if you don't know him, you never heard his voice. Coolest guy. He just grabs onto me right in the right on the shoulder pads, right in my chest and says, it's cool, dude. Just hold on. You'll be all right. <laughs> like, no, no. Sam Whoa. Gash is a big man. That was a big yeah. man. Dude. Yeah. Now, hey, Boy, John, God, John Barkley sorry. loves you tonight. He says, indulge me. I'm old. Second time question. He goes, how great were Kent Hole and Jim uh, Richter. Frank Reich was my uh, next door neighbor as a teenager in Archer Park wow. in the 80s. Had to ask. Wow. All right. So thank you very much. I'll, I'll, I'll keep this one brief and I'll dress them in order. Kent Hull was just amazing. I mean, what would the people talk about how great player he was, but it was because of the amount of studying that he did. Mm-hmm. You know, because it starts with the center. You've got to pay attention. Like half the time, you know, Kent's got one ear to the huddle but he's watching the defense and this is what Morris has got to do, right? Because you're watching personnel changes and you got to know when they have certain personnel changes, they can bring a variety of different blitzes. And also when they bring this guy, we know we have to adjust our protection, whether we're going to slide to the left or the right. I don't know which way is left or right to you guys. (laughs) Um, And that was one of the beauties of Ken Holt because he had it here and he was steel here. You didn't miss it. He didn't make mistakes and he had us, he had us all like a concerto playing our piece at the right time every play. Awesome. What I loved about Jimmy Richer was um he just he approached the game with just such a hey man, don't worry about it. We're gonna we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, let's work on that. You know, yeah, yeah, that was good there, man. Hey, would it be easier if I made the call this way or if I took my step this way? I mean, just such a cool dude. Yeah. So awesome. And then the last one was Frank Reich. I mean, Frank was, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know how much Frank had to do with Jim Kelly being great, but there, there's something there. Mm. Um, having Frank and Gail Gilbert in the room, um, you know, working with Jim and testing him and pushing him and being coaches on the field the way they were. I mean, Frank was, he was one of those guys when he was born he already had like gray hair and wisdom. 
Um, <laughs> and and that's what's make that's what's going to make Indy a problem for us too. I mean, you say Kansas City, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Indy, as long as Frank Reich is going to be yeah. there, just a freaking. But beyond that, also just a wonderful sense of humor. Hmm. And um, you know, as far as decency goes, uh, you know, he dials it up to eleven. And that's it on the Hoof broadcast. It was John Fina with his second, third, fourth, sixth, eighth favorite jabronis. And his TikTok. And his TikTok. Follow me on Flick Flock. If I ever end up on TikTok, I promise. We could just do a two-hour episode where you guys riddle me with insults and jokes. <laughs> oh yeah, sign me up for that. We'll, I'll we'll be, be the first one there. We'll be the first one there. I'll, I'll you said joke it. All, day, all day long, all day. Hey John, thank you for seriously taking yes. your time to join us on this show. Our fans Love really it. do appreciate it. We appreciate it so much. And uh, your 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 wisdom and, and your experience to sharing with us. I mean, I know people ask you kind of the same questions, but you came on and you answered them uh, very well. And it, it help, really does help give us fans a different perspective, those who cover the game, what it's like to be in your shoes. So we really do appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Hopefully, man, I really hope you can come up next season again to Denver uh, and watch a game with us in person. Hopefully we can all be there at the bar. Eric's in New York now, but Sterling and I would be there for sure. Uh, and hopefully we can show you the full force of the Colorado Bills backers. That'd be brilliant. I'm looking yeah. forward to it, fellas. Yeah, been a pleasure. Well, guys, right. no teary long goodbyes. All right, man, <laughs> get, out of here. get out of here, John. Well, that was super damn cool, man. That was uh, – look, yeah. I, I mean, anytime you can get an a NFL great, if you want to say. I mean, John Fina's – dude, that was a great interview, man. That was super yeah. cool. And, and there's so much stuff that – there's so many questions that we could continue to ask him. But we'll, right. we'll see because we'll, we'll, he's a friend of the show. We'll have him back on again sometime. Um, but, listen, the season's over, guys. Like, I'm sad. I'm freaking <laughs> sad over here, man. I'm freaking sad oh, that that that, that we, don't, we won't have a game to cover next week. It sucks. Yeah. It sucks. It does suck. It does suck. But you know what? <clears throat> and, and that's so much more we'll get into later. Right. I think let, let's let's just relish the moment here, man. Let's let's really take some time to, uh, you know, we want to talk to the fans. You know what? Are there, are there certain things you guys want to, you know, talk about your feelings? Yeah, I think I think and like, you know, I think it's important to celebrate what this team did as we as we kind of already did. You know, Eric mentioned we won two playoff games. We're happy to be here. We're in the championship game. It sucks to lose the championship game. But man. No Bills fan our age has ever felt this accomplished until now, you know, and it's yeah. it's that redeeming moment. We're never going to have a moment like this again. 25 years yeah. of suffering and then winning a game that we weren't supposed to win and then beating teams in the playoffs that we weren't expected to beat. And, you know, I mean, it, it was just an amazing feeling. I think the hardest thing for me is knowing that this team, this team was special. I said it since the moment before the season started. Everything about this team – was special and we loved it. And I'm not saying next year's team won't be special because it is. Allen, Diggs, a lot of these guys are going to be exactly back right where they are and, and leading us just like they are now. But, you know, regardless of the offseason, teams change. There's a ton of free agents on this team. We don't know who's going to stay and going to go. The team's going to look different next year. And, and just the way this team felt in my heart meant something. You know, it, it just felt totally different we really believed in these guys uh and we saw that with with Diggs staying out on the field and with you know when Allen at the end of the game was going around hugging every single one of those guys uh because we don't know what it's going to be and, right. and and we have to appreciate and love this team for what it was one of the most special the most special <laughs> Bills team of our adult lives of in 25 yeah. years and, yeah, and that's absolutely. an incredible thing to celebrate yeah and, and watching this team you know finally get on the national stage and, yeah. and be recognized as one of the best teams in the league. I mean, that, that took forever. <laughs> We've been preaching, Hey, the bills are going to be good next year for the last few seasons, but it's nice to actually see that through and see that. Yeah, they did make the correct draft pick to take Josh Allen and that did work out. And now this team is going to be legit for the next 10 years, you know, and that includes re-signing McDermott and Bean as a team in tandem. 
And I, you got a lot to be excited about moving forward. And it, it just it's just getting started right now. Hey, and before we take off here, man, Elliot Eisler, man, we appreciate you uh, for for being yeah. a part of this special season with us. I mean, and I and I and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Like, you know, as much as you guys sit here and say like we make this we make this season, and I don't want to get choked up because you know I'm passionate about this. But yeah. as much as you guys sit here and say like we make this stuff uh, bearable for you guys, you guys do the same for us. Right. It's, not, it's not just one sided, like we enjoy talking about the bills and where they're going and what they're going to accomplish and so forth, because I mean, let's face it. A lot of our years kind of suck due to COVID and, and, and that's not even counting what, what goes on in the personal realm. Right. And so, you know, thank you guys for tuning in and listening to us babble and argue and yeah. laugh and cry and do all that kind of stuff and enjoy the high highs and the low lows and so forth, man, without you guys, none of this will be possible. There will be no cover one. There will be none of that stuff. So man, thank you for tuning in, taking your time out on a Tuesday night, listen to our podcast on Friday yeah. mornings, man, we appreciate it. Seriously. From the bottom of our yeah, hearts. I think that's, that's definitely the second side of this, right? How much fun we have had this season. It's a lot of work to do these shows, but we love it. And it, it's the highlight of my week every week. You know, even my wife, as you all know, she's in the chat. She listens every week. It, it's it's something we look forward to. And, and we're going to continue to give you content throughout the off season. Yeah. So don't worry. We're not going anywhere. We're going to adjust the schedule a little bit maybe, but I reflect what Sterling said. I cannot thank all of you guys who tune in, who listen to the show, who watch it on YouTube afterwards, who, who have interacted with us on Twitter and on, on Facebook, everywhere. Like, thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, it's been a, an amazing experience for all of us. We're going to continue to do what we can to try and bring you our knowledge and entertainment and everything else that we do. Uh, but we couldn't do it without you guys. And, and me personally, want to thank Sterling and Eric as well. Uh, I'm, I'm just the fun guy who comes and gives the knowledge. Sterling does a lot of the work for this Tuesday show. Eric does a lot of the work for the Friday podcast. I, you know, I'm, I'm just here to, to do what I can. So Anthony brings I the energy. Right? I couldn't, I couldn't make it happen without you two guys either. And, and all of the guys that cover one for bringing us aboard and, and believing in us and giving us the platform to just be ourselves and do what we do uh, again. It's just been an absolutely special, unforgettable season uh, it's going to be hard to top next year. Real quick, but real quick. The, task. the most fun game for you this season. Ooh. And you put it in the, the chat. The, the most fun game? Like, the most fun oh. game for me, I'll start the Seattle game. The Bills yeah. just, just whooped ass the whole time. So fun. That was the most fun I had all season watching the Bills. Pittsburgh for me. I mean, just the – Corvette, Corvette, whoop Juju's ass. That, <laughs> that, that to me was just fantastic. Man. New but, England. I'm going to go New England. The second New England game especially, ooh, but just beating New England. I mean, just that feeling. Realizing it. Was it. The, it was the, hey, you, you're the little man now, buddy. So, yeah, yeah you know, and none of that talk about we can't beat that team anymore. No, we're not even talking about you in the offseason. We don't care about you. And, right, I don't think we can say anything without talking about the Baltimore game with the with the pick six. Oh man! Oh, oh man! Yeah. I, oh. Uh, Play of the year, without a doubt. I mean, that was just unbelievable. Yeah, oh, and, and it's cool to see the Bills now on a, on a national stage and people kind of giving them a little bit of credit too. Um, it's been cool, man. But uh, we're gonna be back every week next. I mean, yeah, we're, yeah. Not, we're, still we're here. not going anywhere. We're just shifting our focus now. You know, we, we were talking about you know the games and so forth. Now we're gonna move our attention to the draft and free agency. So you're gonna see. You know, this is where this is where content creators. Look, you either rise to the top or you go you go down. If you don't have good content, people ain't gonna want to watch you. So we are going to do our best. And I've already been work. I don't ever stop working on the draft. I'm constantly working on the draft throughout the season. Uh, from work from the scouting academy and so forth. Even before I was even in school, Eric and I, we would always we were always looking at prospects. It's your own scouting academy, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, you know, you're gonna start seeing that uh, here in the coming weeks. But you know, be sure to tune in on our, our Friday podcast. We do. Uh, we're going to cover some more of that kind of stuff too. Um, but yeah, we're going to be here every week. So make sure you guys tune in. And, uh, you know, if you, you know, you've had, if you have questions that you want us to uh, address during the show, by all means, follow us on Twitter. You see our Twitter handles here. I'm um, Forward Sterling. That's at Anthony Romeo NY and at E Brown Hoof. So be yeah. sure to, uh, to send us your, DM us your questions or, 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 or put it on our, our timeline and we will be sure to answer those. But we will be back next Tuesday night. 
at 9 p.m. We don't know who we're going to have on, but we're going to be having guests. We're going to try to have guests all the time. Uh, that's just kind of how we kind of kick it in the offseason. It's more of a laid back approach, but we're definitely going to get into uh, some of the nitty gritty uh, and, and kind of things that are more thought provoking to get you guys thinking about the could, what could happen, what we think is not going to happen and so forth. So it'll be if you're deaf, if you're a, a Bills fan that gets into the offseason, which is my favorite time of the year, by all means, you're going to stay tuned with us. So, yes, sir. Do uh, you guys have any closing remarks? No, Anthony did all the credits for us, so we're good. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, again, yeah, cover one, man, everybody at cover one, Eric Turner for bringing us over, you know, all the guys for just being there for us during the season. Again, believing in us. We, we loved it. And we're going to continue to bring that energy on this show and, and to this network. Cause it, it really is like a family for us. It, it's an awesome thing to be a part of. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree 100%. We're going to be here. We're going to be here riding out with you guys uh, every step of the way. So, man, thank you for uh, like and subscribe to our show. Uh, we thrive on the likes. Uh, subscribe to Cover One. Subscribe to the Hoof Podcast, man. And we appreciate everything that you guys do and provide for us, man. It's uh, all love goes out to you guys. So, anyway, <laughs> man, we are out of here. And uh, see you later. Go Bills. Bills. <laughs>